1 Corinthians chapter 14. This is the teaching where I lose people, but we believe in teaching all the counsel of God. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, the thing is, is that I've taught it many times. This is why we strongly believe in a doctrine called dispensationalism. In other words, we believe in rightly dividing verses to the right group of people in the right time period. Because if you don't do that, you're going to combine all the verses together and come up with major wrong doctrine. And one of the wrong doctrines is that people believe that they can just uh, speak in tongues, not the biblical speaking of tongues. Biblical speaking of tongues is speaking in different languages. That's what it means. And the Bible shows that this gift of speaking in different languages was given during the time of the Jews. But because God has put off the Jews and switch to the church, that's the reason why that operation is no longer available. Amen. So we're going to look at three verses that seem to show that Christian, uh, that seem to show that speaking in tongues is just some kind of like that. So these are three verses that supposedly seem to show that and seem to show that we might have it. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 9. So here are the three verses, and I'm going to examine them. Now, I'm not going to debunk speaking of tongues because I showed it in so many other videos. Now, what I'm going to... Uh, by the way, look up every verse in the Bible that says tongue. And it's going to show different language. And you're going to see a Jew connected to that every time. It's going to be a Jew when God gave it miraculously. But there are three passages that may seem to show it's like that. So 1 Corinthians 14, verse 9. The verse says right here, So likewise, except ye utter by the tongue words, look at this, easy to be understood. How shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. Look at verse 14, verse 14. The verse says, For if I pray in a what? Unknown tongue. My spirit prayeth but my understanding is unfruitful. So see, they take this interpretation as a unknown tongue, which I cannot understand. That's their interpretation. But the thing is, the why it cannot be understood is because they're not reading verse 9. Look at verse 9. So 14.14 is the first passage of proof for them. But look at verse 9. So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? Because notice right here, Paul, he's pointing out that when they're speaking in tongues, it's a tongue that people will understand. That's spoken by them. That's spoken by normal humans. Because if you think it's blah, 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 blah like that, then look what Paul said at the last part. For ye shall speak into the what? Air. See, Paul's not thinking like that. He's not thinking like it's something that's just all to the air. It's something that is spoken by normal humans. That's what he's pointing out. Another thing right here is that, did you see verse 14? It says, I don't understand. No, it only says, I pray in an unknown tongue. See, why? Because it's not known by others what you speak. And we saw that at verse 9. So it has to be something that a person understands. That's what Paul's pointing out. But another thing right here is that, but my understanding is unfruitful. Did it say that I don't understand, or did it say my understanding is unfruitful? It's unfruitful. It doesn't produce fruit. Because it simply means my understanding of the tongue does not bear any fruit. Right. So obviously, your understanding of a tongue that is not known by others it's unknown to them it's an unknown language it does not bear fruit among the hearers because they don't even understand it at all look at verse 16 else when thou shalt bless with the spirit how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks seeing he what understandeth not what thou sayest so notice what Paul's pointing out right here. He's pointing out this fact that when they're speaking in tongues, it's going to be a tongue that's within their language. And so it's because it's spoken within a normal human language, the person who's hearing it is unknown to him because he's a foreigner. He's of a different language. 
So the whole context right here, what Paul was talking about, he was talking about, obviously, a normal tongue of what people are saying. But because this church did not use the tongue where people can understand it to their language, to their own tongue, you hear that phrase so many times too, my own tongue, that tongue, my own language, that language. They say that quite often because it is referring to a different language. Okay, let's also look at chapter 13, verse 1. That's their second proof text. Chapter 13 and verse 1. That's their second proof text. What does this show right here? Do I speak with the tongues of men, but look at this, and of angels, and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. So this second verse supposedly proves that uh, it's not the tongue of normal humans. Because notice this, tongues of men and of angels. So that's their proof that speaking of tongues is some heavenly, inaudible gibberish that is not spoken with the normal human tongue. It's not different languages, human languages. But you got to understand this. Look at chapter 14, verse 6. Revelation 14, verse 6. So it is an angel in his tongue, but you got to understand this. It's an audible language. It's not inaudible. And not only that, it's an audible language that the whole world can hear. Look at this. It's an audible language. Look at verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and the earth and the sea. So notice right here when an angel speaks in his tongue for the whole world to hear, it's a what? Audible language, not inaudible. When an angel talks to God himself in heaven, so they're speaking to each other, their heavenly language, it's an audible language. Look at chapter 16, verse 5. Chapter 16, verse 5. This angel is talking to God. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged us. Look at this. It's an audible language when they're speaking in heaven. Another one is chapter 19 and verse 17. Look at chapter 19. And we'll read verse 17. Notice that the angel is speaking to the animals. And when he speaks to the animals, he's doing it in a what? Audible language. Look at verse 19, verse 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, look at this, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Again, audible language. Whenever an angel spoke in his angelic tongue throughout the entire Bible, any verse in the Bible, it's always an audible language. This includes Judges 6, verse 12 through 20, Zechariah chapter 1, verse 9 through 12, Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, Matthew chapter 2, verse 13, and etc. and etc. So why did it say tongue of men and of angels? Because obviously angels talk differently than we do. Because look at these angels, There's, they can speak in this kind of supernatural tongue, supernatural language, but it's audible. It's an audible language that's communicated. The last verse, this is probably their strongest one. Look at Romans 8, 26. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. So here's their last proof text for speaking in tongues. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. So this is our verse to prove that you don't know how you can pray. So the Holy, Holy Spirit within you speaks in the tongues that cannot be uttered. So in other words, see, this is not a language that is audible. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which what? Cannot be uttered. So notice right here that you cannot, so because it's tongues that cannot be uttered, this is not normal human language, they will claim. But here's the thing, the, this is easily debunked, is because how can one utter in tongues when the verse says he can't even utter it? So that verse debunks speaking, uttering in tongues. That's not even speaking and uttering in tongues then, see? Because this cannot be uttered. One, 
Number two, another thing right here is that this say tongues or groanings. Groanings. Because it's a groaning, obviously you're not uttering something. Uh, like that. What in the world? Unless they think that the Holy Spirit is a chimpanzee or something, you know, like that. See, this is a circus. This thing, this wrong doctrine is a circus. They're trying to create our Lord in his tongue. God's tongue is sacred. Isn't the word of God sacred? I refuse to put it like blah, 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 like that. Isn't that really a disgrace to him? Hmm, irreverence of something sacred, maybe. All right, but let's say this. The Holy Spirit, it says he groans, and it turns it into the right prayer to God on our behalf. That's what it said right there, right? We don't know how we should pray as we ought. So what? He intercedes that prayer with groanings that cannot be uttered. So it's a wonderful promise that the Holy Spirit intercedes for me when there comes a time I'm uncertain in the way that I should pray. Right? When you pray, you feel like you're not saying the right words, and you could use it better, and you probably gave the wrong prayer. This verse is the Holy Spirit interceding on your behalf and it groans within you and it communicates the right prayer to God. This is what Gene Kim really needs, God. This is what Gene Kim's really saying right here. That part, he made a mistake right there, right here. So I'm interceding. That's what he really meant, Lord. Because I know his spirit and I know that's what he really meant and that's what he really needs. Amen. Even though his fleshy tongue said something Amen. different. And that's a wonderful promise that is ruined by charismatics that it was all done by blah, 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 blah. That's what they say. Amen. Yeah. No, I want to turn it into a promise for me when I pray. Amen. 